I called my barber, said, can you get me in? They said, yeah, come this afternoon. I went to the barber shop, so so happy and pleased. I was going to get a good haircut from a barber I trust. And when it came time for my appointment, the, the receptionist come out and said, Mr. Cunningham, I'm, I'm sorry, but your barber had to leave on an emergency. He's not here today, but, but Julie can cut your hair if you want her to. And I thought, well, I'm here. I need a haircut. Julie will be just fine. About two minutes later, a girl stepped around the petition. She had hair that was sticking straight up in spikes. Some of it was purple. Some of it was blue. Some of it was yellow. Some of it was orange. That girl must have had a hundred piercings in her face. All around her ears, her lips, her nose. I mean, in in the sides of her eyes, she was all pierced up. And under the piercing was all kind of painting. She had on polka dot pants and a plaid shirt. She had on two different color socks. And her shoes didn't match. She said, I'm Julie. Are you Jack? If it wasn't for wanting to please God, I'd have said, no ma'am. Jack said, tell you he had to leave. And I thought, well, I'll just endure it. And I went and sat down and I did like I do too often. I thought I'll just go to sleep. I'll just sit down here and close my eyes and rest while this girl cuts my hair and I hope she hurries up. There couldn't be anything in the world her and I would have in common. There couldn't be anything on earth she and I would want to talk about. She wouldn't want to hear anything i got to say. I certainly don't want to hear anything she's got to say. I apologize, but that's what was going through my mind. While she's cutting my hair, she said, where do you work? So well, I, I work over here at the World Evangelism Center. Go to the end of I-70 and right where it butts into 270, that big building right there. And she said, oh yeah, I was there the other day. I said, you were at World Evangelism Center the other day. She said, yeah, you have a bookstore in there, don't you? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, my mama is a cocaine addict. My uncle is a hopeless cocaine addict. She said, somebody gave my mama one of those videos on Left Behind. And and, and she said, we all sit down in the living room and watched it. And she said, I don't know nothing about God. And I don't know nothing about the church. And I don't know nothing about the Bible. But she said, when I was finished watching it, I knew I didn't want to go to hell. She said, I went to your bookstore and bought a Bible. She said, I don't know how else to find out anything about God. She said, I just bought a Bible and I'm going to start reading it through. She said, I've had it two days now. I've already read. And she named some books that she had been reading from. But she said, I really don't understand anything about it. And when I looked in the mirror, tears are streaming down her face. The other people that are cutting hair have quit cutting hair. And now they're listening to her talk. And some of them got tears in their eyes. And when I got up out of that chair, I said, Julie. I want to apologize to you for not telling you about Jesus. I said, but if you'll stay here, I'm going to go to my office and get a Bible study. And me and you are going to sit out there on that park bench. And I'm going to give you a Bible study and help you know about Jesus. We don't have a right to determine who can hear and who can't.